So there's a reason I'm telling you about Unix. Beyond the fact that it's just useful information to know, it's required background knowledge for our implementation of MapReduce. So what's MapReduce? MapReduce is about big data processing. It's a framework for batch processing of large data sets, where I mean a framework as some system used by programmers to build applications, as opposed to by users who don't know how to program. Batch processing means that we have a ton of data that's all available at the outset, and results aren't really needed until the processing completes. So we're just going to do one big processing as a batch of information, and then we'll be done. And big data is this buzzword that's used to describe data sets so very large that they can actually reveal interesting facts about the world, usually from some sort of statistical analysis. And big data is important because more and more applications that we have are online, and therefore we can collect more and more data about how people behave in the world and learn more about that. Now, there are obviously privacy concerns about this sort of thing, and that's important to worry about, but this can also be used for good. So the idea behind MapReduce, this framework, is that data sets might be too big to be analyzed on one machine. They might not even fit on that machine, and even if they do, it might take too long to just use one machine at a time to process them. So using multiple machines has some complications, regardless of the application. And pure functions enable an abstraction barrier between the actual data processing you're using and the effort of coordinating a bunch of machines in a distributed application. So by modularizing these two pieces of logic, the data processing itself and the coordination of lots of machines, we can actually make our lives easier because we're going to implement the distributed application coordination logic just once and use it again and again for every data processing application we want. Okay, so before we know exactly how MapReduce works, let's just look at some of the things that come out of it. So for instance, if we wanted to go through and process all of the Google queries that ever came in, um, we might need to use a distributed computing application to do that. And fortunately, the folks at Google have done that for us and released something called google.com slash trends, which tells you how search terms are used over time. So here we see the eternal struggle between cats and dogs. Dogs are actually more popular than cats on the internet. And what's worse than that, cats have been in a steady decline over the years, whereas dogs are currently coming up again, which is wonderful because I love dogs. Okay, so I can learn all sorts of interesting things about the world. Um, let's put those dogs away, and instead of cats, let's start looking at uh, Gangnam, a region in Seoul made famous for that Gangnam style song. You can see exactly when it became popular and how quickly it became not so popular anymore. So we can learn about trends that happen over time. Why did people stop watching the, Miley, the Gangnam style video? Well, that's because Miley Cyrus came along and people liked her a little bit more. So her peak was actually slightly higher than the Gangnam peak. And why is it the case that um, she got such so popular in 2013? Well, maybe it had something to do with a particular video that she released. Not that I've seen this video, but as we can see, it, uh, its spike in popularity coincides with the one for Miley Cyrus as a whole. Okay, so we can learn about popular culture, but what else might we worry about? Well, people actually care about more than just Miley Cyrus and uh, Psy and what's going on in music. Often they care about most weather. And as we can see, the frequency of search terms for the word snow exactly coincides with um, the weather patterns for the Northern Hemisphere. So it gets snowy right around the turn of the year, and that's when people start talking about snow and they start Googling it as well. And you can see this cyclic pattern where in 2005, they were interested in snow, and in 2006, they were interested in snow as well. Now, people are interested in snow in July and August, not only because of just a background interest in snow all the time, but also because that's when it snows in Australia. Okay, so if we want to build that sort of application, we're going to need something like MapReduce. So here's the MapReduce evaluation model. There's a map phase where we apply a pure mapper function to inputs. 
emitting intermediate key value pairs. The mapper is the thing that does this work, and so it takes an iterator over some inputs, such as lines of text, and it yields zero or more key value pairs per input. So that's the job of the mapper. It takes in some input, gives you back some output in the form of key value pairs. So let's say I have a haiku. Google MapReduce is a big data framework for batch processing. And I have a mapper that counts the vowels in each line. So if this line came in, it would tell us, oh, there's two O's, an A, a U, and three E's. In this evaluation model, we're going to run the same mapping function over every input line. So we have lots of different mappers, each of which gets a different line of text. And we can then write out the vowel counts for this line and the vowel counts for this line. So that's a way in which we can process a lot of data in parallel by having different mappers operating on different parts of the input. Okay, so then there's a reduce phase after the map phase. For each intermediate key, apply a reducer function to accumulate all values associated with that key. In the example here, the vowels are the keys, the numbers are the values, and if we want to know how many O's there are in total, we'll need to sum up all the values. So the reducer takes an iterator over key value pairs. All pairs for a given key are always consecutive. That's an important part of the processing. We always know that we're going to get all the values for the letter O as the key in a row. And the reducer yields zero or more values, each associated with that key. So let's continue our example. The reducer sees some sequence of key value pairs that are grouped by key already. And then what it does is it processes all of the different values with the same key to give us just one value reduce. Okay, so we add together 4, 1, and 1, and we'll get the total number of A's in the entire haiku is 6. And the same reducer or a separate reducer could process all the E's and tell us that there are a total number 5. And there are two I's and 5 O's and 1 U in this haiku. 